you come to the unit, you press the gauge and you see that the pressure is too high, adjust the regulator with that engaged until you get it to the proper setting. Being like we said, between five and 10 pounds. Same on the driver's side, we wanna bring that gauge back down to approximately five pounds. Release that. They'll dump down to zero. And they seem to be back to normal again. With the automatic retract, which is what we went over earlier, it also comes with a water manifold and a G57 wrap former. The wrap former pump station on this one here happens to be a dual. We're running the two wrap rounds on this out of one panel, but the, the foaming station consists of a tank stand, hydrominder, flow jet pump, and then the air regulator for the pump drive and also for the, to make the foam with a solenoid valve. When setting up the unit, it's important to make sure that the tank is clean, set up all your hoses, turn your water on, set your tip to the right dilution rate. In this situation here, we have a purple tip. We want to make sure that we have the proper draw. We're drawing chemical up through the hydrominder into the unit and automatically mixing into the tank. If we want to change that, we pull off our hose and we would unscrew our tip from our hydrominder, reading the chart that came with it, and change our tip from smaller to larger. And one size tip will make a big uh, change in reduction. It's not getting good flow into the inductor and it's not drawing the chemicals. We can see that by the, the change in color here and the dilution. So what we need to do now is we need to service and check the screen on the hydrominder. So we need to shut our water source off first, okay? Pull down our chain to relieve any pressure. Then we need to unscrew our connection. The screen that's on the inlet of our hydrominder, we do that by unscrewing our connection at the water, at the water source. That water drain down in. And inside this unit, we have a strainer. As you can see, this, this strainer is, is clogged with sand and debris because this is a new car wash, a new water main, new water service. Um, we are probably gonna have to do this on a, for, a, few, for a, a couple of times until we get this uh, all flushed out. Okay, now that it's clean, I need to reassemble it. So we've gotta set the O-ring into the unit. So that it's seated properly all the way to the bottom. Reconnect it to our water source. Make sure that we tighten that up. Okay, turn our water source back on, make sure we have no leaks, pull our hose off our inductor, drain off a little bit of chemical into the tank, reattach it, pull on our hydrominder chain, and now we've got good water flow and then a good draw, okay, which will allow us to get the proper foam on the vehicle again. Hydrominder in our tank set up, we adjust our Pressure on our pump to about 40 PSI, our air pressure to about 20 to try to get a, a, a nice, wet, foamy consistency. If we lose all of our air, you'll see what happens is all we'll end up getting is a, a, a light liquid, very wet, very soupy. As we add air to it, you'll see that we get a little bit more pressure and a little bit more foam. more straighter stream. And that's what we, that's what it looks like adjusted with about 20 pounds of air and 40 pounds of liquid. If our liquid drops too low, we get very sporadic and you can actually see in here that the air takes over and starts to fill up the holes but we don't get the right flow and it barely reaches the foam brush. So it's important to have the right balance between Probably 30 to 40 PSI going through the flow jet pump 
at about 20 PSI going through that airline to give us a, a nice solid stream of foam that'll both cling to the vehicle, cling to the brush. and give us a good uh, lubricating soap application for the cloth to run. So there is another air control valve for fine detailing. It's up here. You see it way up here? Let me get inside. This one here now will allow more air to come out to the unit. So if that's open more, we get too much. If we close it, we, we lose completely. We want to eliminate that stream there that we had, that aeration. We close that valve a little bit to make sure that they all stay full like this here without the air pulsating. Then we can come back to our unit. And increase our pump pressure a little bit. And if we open that needle valve a little bit more, to get that unit to come up just a little bit higher. If you don't get a good foam right out of the machine, then we've got to increase our, our chemical strength. And that would be by changing that tip on the hydraminder. If we don't get foam like this here, we probably don't have enough solution in there. The wrap around brush should be set up so that the two pillow block bearings are, are plumb. They're directly over each other and the space between our adjusting blocks, adjusting screws, top and bottom, are even. They can be checked with a measuring tape to make sure that we have an even space between the bottom bearing and the top bearing. And this one here is set up at approximately 7 eighths of an inch. And some applications on high-speed um, conveyor washing, it is sometimes necessary or desired by the operator to get the, the wraparound to chase more and to be a little bit heavier on the back of the vehicle. That is achieved by changing the pitch of this back arm of the bearing. The only bearing needs to be, you only need to adjust one bearing to make it happen usually. On this one here, we'll focus on the bottom bearing. If we wanted this brush to be more aggressive and chase the back of the vehicle, the first thing we would do is we'd take our 916 wrench here, we'd loosen up the outside set screw, and we'd back it off away from the bearing approximately an eighth of an inch then lock it back in place, okay? With that eighth of an inch gap that we have on this side here, we would then go ahead and loosen up the two big screws on the bottom of the bearing, the big bolts, and then take this one, this, this adjusting screw and actually back it out a little more than eighth of an inch and then use this screw to then force the bearing over, okay? By taking the bottom bearing to the wall on either side that you're operating on, if it's the passenger side bearing, the bottom bearing towards the passenger side wall will pivot the, the brush in an angle that'll make it chase the back of the car a little bit quicker and make it more aggressive on the side of the vehicle. If we wanted it to be less aggressive, if it, if it was too aggressive in the slower car wash and the shock absorbers themselves and the regular tension is too aggressive, we would do the opposite motion. We would set this one back an eighth of an inch, loosen our bolts, take this adjusting screw and move it towards center line, and that would make the brush a little bit lighter on the vehicle. An eighth of an inch on this bearing will change this brush dramatically. It'll make a, a quite a bit of difference between how aggressive it is on the side of the vehicle, the lean against the antennas, the penetration on the mirrors. If we go the other way, it'll um, make it much lighter, so it'll stand around there, and you can then dial the air valves and the retract solenoid valves to make it chase and follow. When we set it up at neutral position, we find that it works extremely well. Um, speeds anywhere from 60 up to 120, 140 cars an hour without a problem. We'd much rather see the adjustments made at the air solenoid valve, not up here at the bearing, but this is just fine tuning when we really want that brush to act a little bit more aggressive or a little bit lighter on the vehicle. When you're done making your adjustments, then set your stops back where they, so they're both touching the bearing. and then lock them in place. And that'll hold the bearing from shifting or moving during regular wash operations. They're designed so that as the, the vehicle returns to wash the back of the car and it comes into the center, it'll compress that bumper stop 
and make it very gentle and soft around the back of the vehicle. It has three uh, adjustment positions, as you can see, where the pins are located. Standard from the factory, they come set in the center points, which allows the brush to be um, evenly, sp evenly centered on the front of the vehicle so that both brushes overlap a little bit towards the center of the license plate. In some areas where license plates are not an issue and there are no front license plates, some operators want to move these uh, more towards center to make them a little bit more aggressive and do some more cleaning. That's done by reducing the, the two pins, sliding these up, and then sliding this bumper stop back far enough and setting the pins back into the rear position. This will bring this, this brush arm will come in a little bit further, allow it to overlap the front of the vehicle. They should not both be done this way. They should be done, only one brush should be brought in towards center. Okay? And that'll help to overlap the, the front of the vehicle and get more cleaning on the front of the car. But normal operation, they should be, again, reset. Back towards the front.